Okay, this is going to be a pretty quick tutorial on how to make low polygon trees for your game environments. And so right here we're looking at a, you know, just a generic 512 by 512 texture. Um, I've put bark here up along the side and um, I've put the tree, basically the tree that I want to see, you know, just a side image of a tree here on the left hand side. Um, and you saw the red there, that was actually my alpha channel here. We'll show you that in just a second. But basically I put my tree here on the left side. Um, I cut it out. I used some of the uh, magic wand tools and um, where are you? Some of the background removal tools and stuff like that just to kind of cut this tree out real nice and detailed. Um, it's not an optimal texture. You know, there's some wasted space, but for this example it works. And down here, I have my alpha one alpha channel. Now, if you don't have that, you're, it's actually just going to look like this and have the red, green, and blue channels. And you'll hit this little page here, and it makes your alpha one. And on your alpha one, you'll get a white or a black, you know. And basically, let me increase the size of my brush here. Basically, whatever's white will show, you know, and whatever's black will be transparent. If we click on and off these eyeballs, we can see on the alpha channel that you know, we have a white area and we have a black area. And basically the white is what's going to show up in your game engine and the black is what's going to be transparent and hidden. So it's very useful. Um, I'm going to go back in my history real quick. And we can see that I have, let me turn off this by clicking the RGB here, and you'll see I have um, my alpha channel here for the texture. The whites for the bark over here and then this white's for just the uh, you know the tree here or whatever and it's pretty pretty sloppy right now I mean I've left some of the trunk in here and everything and really kinda wanna probably um, just kinda get rid of you know a lot of that defining trunk stuff and um, you'll see why later or whatever this tree kinda looks a little lopsided now that I look at it but for our purposes in the demo this is gonna work great so what we want to do is we want to make sure we have our image here laid out the way we I have it here pretty similar to this um, you really don't need to use that much space for the bark and all that I know it's not optimal and you also want to make sure that you have an alpha channel over here with uh, you know your bark and your tree and everything visible and whatever's going to be invisible will look red like this um, the other thing I did too is um, it's going to bleed a little bit of an edge around everything. So on your behind your tree, usually you're going to find yourself with images off the internet with a white background behind the tree or a blue sky. And you really want to make sure that you put the uh, the tree when you put it on top of your texture. Um, I flattened it now, but before it was flattened, I laid this on a green background, just so that when the uh, you know when this kind of white stencil here went around it the transparency areas it kind of picked up a green around the edges so it still um, you know it still looked uh, green around the edges and not white you get a re really weird white outline so basically that's the texture you don't even have to use a 512 by 512 and you just want to go file save as and um, I created a new folder on the desktop and I call it beach tree and um, dot TGA you want to probably use the targa format it's dot TGA it says target down there. You want to make sure alpha channels is checked. And you want to just look over here again and make sure you have an alpha channel there. And it's save. I want to replace mine because mine's replacing the old one. You definitely want to make sure it's 32 bits per pixel. That's the 32 bits is what supports the extra information for the transparency. If it's 24 or 16, then you're not going to get the transparency. It won't show up inside of Maya or your game engine. You want to make sure it's 32 bits per pixel. Um, if it's grayed out and it doesn't allow you to go 32 bits per pixel and it comes up this way by default at 24 16 just double check and make sure you have an alpha channel over here and make sure the little eyeballs are all turned on for visibility too and uh, we just hit OK so now we're gonna go over to Maya and in Maya I actually have a, f uh, a few different trees I'm gonna go shading wireframe unshaded and we're gonna look at the wireframes um, this is a 68 tri tree, 34 quad polygons. This one's 77 tries, um, 98 tries, and then um, the last tree here is 108. So they kind of go up in the amount. Um, 
And so this is the tree. I'm going to turn the wireframe off. This is the tree from the Photoshop texture that um, I was just showing you right here. It's 108 tries, so it's a little heavier. Um, what you can do is you'll notice here um, that I put a lot of these kind of rotated and bent down, you know, to fill out the tree. It's a really good way to, to kind of fill out the tree, but if you really need a lot lower try count, just select a few. I'll delete those out of there. And now this is a 38 try tree and really still looks pretty acceptable, you know, maybe even for an LOD, um, still looks pretty acceptable for a tree. So basically, I'll bring those, what I deleted back, Z back, but we'll hide it. Oh, I hid my trunk. Okay, well I do some selecting here. Okay, and we'll just break down how this tree was built. So right here, what you can see is it's just a single plane with the that material applied to it, and you can see by looking in Photoshop, this red area painted in as black on the alpha channel um, is completely transparent on this single polygon plane. Um, and I have a tutorial alpha masks um, in Photoshop of my that shows you how to do this transparency and how to basically it's more detailed on how to paint it in Photoshop and get it onto some geometry in Maya. Um, so it kind of deconstructed how I put this together. And so we'll look at it and you'll see that I just kind of rotated all of them. These single planes kind of evenly did like, you know, 35 degree rotations on them. And then we'll take a look at the trunk, which is, I'm going to turn wireframe on for all of this, which is really just a cylinder. And I'll show you how we do the trunks real quick. We're going to go create polygon primitives, cylinder, and we'll bring it over. And basically, by default for me, it created a six-sided, um, you know, cylinder with no divisions down it. So basically, what I'm going to do is hold down that, go face, I'm going to select all the faces, then I'm going to hold down shift and just select the center ones. And I, what I do is I delete the top and the bottom. So basically, I get a hollow kind of trunk cylinder. I'm going to scale it down to kind of fit what I have right here. And uh, we'll try to duplicate this trunk. I'll go vertex by holding down the right mouse button. And just pull it up like that. And really, you just want to maybe scale these vertices in a little. I mean, you could probably get away with that. On this trunk that I did here for uh, to optimize, I, um, I merged all the vertices at the top to one single point. Um, and the other thing you can do here is you can go like your edit mesh, insert edge loop tool, and kind of just insert a couple loops here or there maybe. Grab some of the verts, scale them, bend them just a little bit. Give your tree a little, oops, a little character. And then usually I'll, in order, so I'm not wasting polygons, I'll grab all the top ones and go edit mesh, merge, and options, and just put a bunch of numbers in there and hit apply. I know how that sounds very technical, but it was it's like a merge distance, and if you just set a bunch, a bunch of numbers in there, it makes a huge distance that it'll search to merge the vertices. And so I have my freeze transforms, my center pivot, my delete history. It's a series of little buttons I hit where I'll go, you know, modify, freeze transformations, modify, center pivot, and then edit, delete by type history, and it just cleans up the all the information on it. So that's basically a tree trunk, and you can see what deleting the tops and bottoms did for it. It was optimizing. So we'll go Window, Rendering Editors, Hypershade. This is where our materials are. Okay, and we'll look in here, and I know that mine is the beech tree here. My hold down right mouse button and go Graph Network and look at it, and there it is. It's my beech tree. So I'm going to hold down middle mouse button. And just drag it on top to the geom on top of the geometry there. Um, you can just do that by like selecting the object and holding down right mouse button. And as I'm moving up and down here, I'm seeing a menu, but for some odd reason, my graphics card won't record the menu overlays. 
so I have to show you the full length way of doing it. So I'm going to go Window, UV Texture Editor, and I have my tree trunk selected. So we look over here, and we see our texture, and we see the trunk UVs, and it's real easy. They're already laid out. The UVs are laid out perfect already, so just kind of move them over here and just scale them up to fit. And you can tweak the scaling however you want, um, but basically that's a tree trunk right there, and it looks just like the the one here I had from the you know the past. And I can move it over here into my planes and just kind of eyeball it, whatever. And um, I'll deconstruct this just here a little, and you can you can see what it's made up of. Let me hide these other trees over here real quick. And you can kind of see that it's just doing simple planes. And we will look in the UV texture editor too. Um, you can see that the plane is sized similar to the UV space here and it fits the trunk in there. Um, another thing we could have done is I can grab these vertices because you notice now that the the actual trunk here to the other tree is kind of showing up. So you could grab these vertices and kind of wor it works just pull it into the other tree, tree trunk, you know, like pull it inside there. If you have to scale it down or whatever. It doesn't need to be perfect. All of mine were perfectly aligned and you know rotated 45 degree planes but they don't have to be. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to unhide everything. I'm going to go display show all and we'll look at the other planes in here that I put in here. You can see them now. They're, um, they're just kind of rotated down and they're rotated around Y like this around the tree and they just give a let me remove the wireframe they give a whole lot of fullness to the tree you know so but if you don't need them um, see how full it looks from the top and depending on where your character is going to be if you don't need them then you don't need to do all these filler branches um, but if you do go ahead this tree here actually has a pretty unique a um, bunch of filler pieces too, but basically just twist and bend all those polygons around in there until you fill it out. And so I hope this technique helps people to build uh, low polygon trees in Maya.